Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Last time I showed you how to scratch build a desktop PC. This time I'm going to finish the job by installing a Linux operating system and applications. Linux is totally free open source software that comes in many so termed distributions. One of the most popular of these is Ubuntu, which can be freely downloaded from ubuntu.com. Here I'm selecting the desktop version and then the latest release. The site asks me if I want to make a voluntary donation, but as this is not required and I'm not about to share my PayPal details in this video, right now I'll continue directly with the download and save the file. Once our download is complete, we need to burn it to a DVD. You can create a disk from an ISO file in many different packages, but here I'm using InfraRecorder, which can be freely downloaded from infrarecorder.org. We just need to create a data disk and then select Actions and Burn Image. We then navigate to where our ISO file is located, here down a few subdirectories, select the file, and press OK. And InfraRecorder then starts to write the DVD. This will of course take a few minutes, but fairly soon we'll have a finished disk. As an alternative to all this downloading and burning, via Ubuntu.com we also have the option of spending a few pounds or dollars to get a pre-made installed DVD. Right, having written our disk, it's now time to install it on the computer. Since I saw you last, I've actually put the side panel back on the machine. I've also added a speaker in to this disk test setup. But other than that, the machine is sitting there exactly as it was when you last saw it doing its first boot at the end of my last video. So what I'm going to do is to eject the DVD-ROM drive, put in the disk we've just written with Ubuntu on it, put the disk back in again, and then to make the machine um, restart itself and boot from that disk, I'll do the easy way, I'll just press the reset button. The machine will now reboot, we'll see, see the BIOS flash screen there, and hopefully it'll start to read the DVD-ROM drive, I can see it's doing it, um, and we'll get some activity and it'll take a while for anything to appear on the screen. As you can see, eventually we'll get the Ubuntu logo. It will appear with its little flashing um, progress bar underneath. This will take quite a while to progress, um, but eventually uh, we'll be offered the option of installing uh, the operating system. Maybe, aha, we have a background. We're getting towards something happening here. And there we are. We have our installation options. As you can see, we can either install Ubuntu or we can try it and run it from a DVD. And in fact, that works very well on any computer. Just put one of these disks in, use a try option. It won't write anything to your hard drive. You can try the operating system uh, without having to install it. But here, we'll go straight to install. And then we see we have a, a set of options available. Make sure we've got at least 4.8 gig available. We have, uh, we are connected to the internet. Um, I've connected a, 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 um, a wire in. I'm going to click on download updates while installing. And I'm also going to click very importantly on install third party software while installing. That means things like MP3 decoders, different video codecs, so that when we're finished here, we should be able to use things like, like YouTube, for example, straight um, off the install. So that's all set, and we'll just press continue. We've then got an installation type. Um, we've got the options of erasing disk um, and installing Ubuntu, encrypt the new installation for security. Well, I'm sure some people would like that, but I'm not going to. Um, we're not going to use log logical volume management or something else. We'll just stick with the straightforward erase disk and install, install Ubuntu option. That's nice and straightforward. Stick with the default for once. That's fine. Continue. I now need to um, make sure I've got the right keyboard. This is an English UK keyboard, English UK. That's fine. Uh, 
it wants to know a little bit about me. Um, what do you think I should tell it? My name is um, Christopher Barnett, and my computer's name is going to be, I think, CJB L1 Linux 1. Um, username can be Christopher, that's fine. Um, I'm going to log in automatically and I will put in a password, but I won't tell you what that is. My password is too short, but I don't care about that because this is a test install. Like all installations, this takes a little bit of time, so of course I'm going to speed things up um, so you'll just things fly past, but actually in practice they wouldn't fly past, you'd have to have a little bit of time and a little bit of patience, as you always do with computers. And there we are, we nearly seem to be at, at, at the end. Uh, progress bar is completed. Isn't it annoying the way complete computers complete progress bars and then have something entirely separate to do? Yes, it's now um, installing the system and got other things coming up, so it'll obviously take a load more time that, uh, in the way computers always do. It's not fair, is it? One complete progress bar, you just get another progress bar to complete. I always find it fascinating when I've just built a computer and it's starting to do something like an install because it's just been a, a set of components lying around for so long and then suddenly it's actually a, I was going to say a living, breathing, thinking machine. Of course, it's, it's none of those things, but it's certainly, um, it's more than a simple pile of components now and it's trying to get something done as, as you can see as we head towards the middle of our uh, second progress bar. Ah, oh, it's now started downloading things from the internet. This must be a positive sign. It's picking up um, extra codecs and updates and that type of thing. It said it's less than a minute left. Of course, we'll speed through this, but it's, it's good to see it's doing it. And there we are. Installation is complete. All we have to do is to restart now. So obviously what I'll do now is to click restart now. Here's BIOS again. And here we go. The black screen, but hopefully something's going on. We'll soon see our new um, freely downloaded operating system. Oh, something's happening. Ubuntu. And there we are. This is Ubuntu's desktop. It's got some applications pre-installed down the edge. Like most people, when you first get a computer these days, I'll go to the browser. A little bit of disk activity. Go to the obvious website. Hopefully I've got that right, I have. And yes, obviously the web is, is working. Um, we'll also check YouTube is working. Good test of media, seems to be fine. And we'll just play that, check all the codecs are working. I do it to stay sharp. I take care of my body, but... We have an advert playing, marvelous thing, the adverts. Um, but we'll just pull that up. 720p uh, and there we have a good example of the fact this machine is set up free operating system free applications all the codecs obviously work it's it's playing video no problems um, I will however stop that there because me talking to me is just too weird just to prove we've got other applications here let's for example launch what's effectively the, the open office um, badged here uh, this is the Excel clone so you've got your spreadsheet uh, which of course you can write hello in, the most important thing in any piece of software, that obviously works no problems at all. And we'll discard that. And now just plug in a USB key. This will just give us some content. Uh, it's come up down there, look, to, to show you that everything else works. If I click on, say, a Word document, you can see we've got a working word processor there. 
no problems at all. I'll come out of that. Um, if we try maybe a PowerPoint presentation, again, you've got a working version of PowerPoint, rather large presentation, this one. Um, and again, it should work no problems, it seems to. So if you want to do the PowerPointy things, that is all available to you. And finally, I've also got here some um, video content. So these are some um, 1080p video files recorded a 3D print show a few weeks ago. You can see it over on Explaining the Future. And again, as you can see, it's playing 1080p video, no problems at all, off the USB key. Again, the codex must work, the software works, the hardware's up to that type of job. Um, I'm sure it'll play a MP4 as well. It's not bad off a first boot, this really. Um, it does, it plays it no, no issues at all. Yep, yeah, it's all, all going along and um, but almost back to the shot we just saw only in the, in the final video. So, final thing I'll, I'll point out is that, oh, you can change the um, appearance, of course, in any other operating system. If you want, say, clouds, you can have clouds as your background. Um, we've also got here a software center. So if you want other software, again, lots of other things can be downloaded, not just limited to what comes with the install. Um, you can either search for things or you've got games, graphics, whatever. So what I'll do now is just to install a couple of other things just to show you there's lots and lots of flexibility with a, a Linux-based system based upon Ubuntu. Okay, I'm back again. Uh, I've downloaded a couple of bits of software. The, the first is called um, Caden Live. It's a video editor, as you can see. Multi-track editor, playing here a couple of 720p clips with a dissolve between them. Um, and clearly proving that it's possible on the hardware we've got here and using Linux software to do some video editing. I've also installed, just to prove it's possible, a, a first-person shooter game. I have to admit I've got very little idea what's going on in any of this, but uh, I think if I do that, I end up somewhere. Oh, I do look. Um, oh dear, something bad happened there, I think. Oh dear, someone's been killed. Well, I don't think I'm gonna keep with this. It makes me feel rather ill. But hopefully, what I've proved with both of these is that you can use Linux and you can use budget hardware to do some very good um, computing stuff. For many people, Linux will meet all of their computer software requirements. Given that you can download it for free, this is kind of amazing and clearly very good value. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.